Rodriguez here with Eulalio Magaña. And this, we didn't, we didn't actually come up with a name for this podcast yet. We couldn't start it. We could put it in the name later, like, yeah, you know, insert name here, like you say. Welcome everybody to the the best podcast the world's ever known. Times three. I, I don't know. I don't have a good name for it yet. We'll, we'll, we'll come back in editing. That's what editing is for. We'll, that's what, that's we'll what editing is for. That's a good idea. Yeah. Um, for now, I'm going to go with Welcome to All Things Film, like I originally thought of. Where we're going to be talking about anything motion pictures, movies, uh, TV shows, web series, music videos. Uh, maybe we'll talk about video games if we feel up to it, something like that. Anything that you might want us to talk about too, leave it in the comments and we'll get to it next episode. But for today, we have a few uh, choice topics just to get started off and some things that we've seen recently. Uh, you just told me you saw a movie. Which one was it? Yes, I saw the new uh, Ouija board movie. Nice. It's pretty pretty interesting. I didn't know what, you know, I usually try to avoid these movies nowadays because all the horror movies are made like for the kids, for the teenagers are really bad horror movies. But I saw, you know, a good rating. So I'm like, why not? Imagine it. Go see it. And it actually was pretty good. Um, it actually had me like on the edge of my seat, like on my shirt or my face, like like scared like a little kid. Um, so like, it was, I'm surprised though that it's PG-13 because there was some like, like violence in it, but there wasn't any cussing. Um, it was set in the 50s and it didn't feel like a product placement movie. That's good. Because I read an article, they're going to make a movie about the board game. I'm like, oh great, one of the cash grabs based on the on a product they want to sell and it's going to just be crap, like a giant commercial. But do you do you think a lot of people are going to buy the board game anyway though because of that movie? I think yeah, because it came out in the right time, like right before Halloween. Oh, yeah. And the movie was actually pretty good. Like, I don't think they cared. Like, you know what? Make a good movie. We don't care if it makes us make the, makes Hasbro look like we <laughs> we condone violence and like you know show death, show blood, show whatever you guys got. Yeah, uh, anyway, that's the thing though. Like, like you said, they didn't they didn't say much about cussing, right? There wasn't a whole bunch of like I'm guessing sexual innuendos. There was like one kiss, and then. The, 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 there were teenagers and he said good night and then he left because it was inside <laughs> in the 50s and the wife and the mom kind of liked the priest but that, that was it like they didn't try anything so yeah so as long as there's no cussing and no no sex stuff then go ahead murder everybody you want Just yeah because I'm pretty sure like who hasn't wanted to murder while their family members are playing a board game right <laughs> like, yeah, every time we actually just bought our mom for um, for her birthday yesterday uh, Monopoly, he, my brother got it for her, and when we were kids, we'd play that until like 3 in the morning, and she would just be pissed, and the whole family would get angry at each other. You sh probably shouldn't play board games with your family. Well, that was, what was funny about this movie. Well, not funny, but they kind of made you feel like sad, kind of like, like the, the mom, some spoilers here. Uh, my mom wanted to talk to, like, we just want to talk to our dead dad. I wanted you guys to talk to your dead dad. Makes you feel like... Even though it's a game, people are trying to talk to their dead relatives, so it feels sad. like it's a sad, it's like, you know, it's a game, it's kind of like a, you mean, it means well. So it's almost a thing brought to you by Hasbro, <laughs> Has, uh, based on the Hasbro game Ouija board. So people are leaving like, so we should get it or something, it should be everybody die, but like, you know, I still want to talk to my dead dad. Just try it, who cares about die at the end? Fam family Spoiler game night. Yeah, everyone, everybody dies. That's the best way to end movies, everybody dies. Well, it makes me think, like, are they going to do more board games, like Hasbro? Because it was a quality movie, it wasn't like, like, here you go, go buy it. Like, they didn't, like, go to the store. She, she just bought it, like, at a random store, like, it wasn't like a Walmart or Woolworths or whatever it was around back then. I think Woolworths, yeah, that would be, that'd be the store. But I, I would watch, um, like, an Operation game, horror movie, but it was, it would be like Saw. Wait. Like a Saw game? Look up um, Saw movie? Film Riot. Film they Riot? have one called Operation, where they do a, a, a game video. It's it's based on the game Operation. And they don't show you, like, this guy's oh, you gotta make sure you save his life or I'm gonna kill you. Save my buddy. And then you look down and play on the board. So you get a chance. I'll put it in the, in the description, that video. But you gotta check it out, too. Well, I kinda already saw it since you explained the whole thing to me. Oh, no, you're, you're gonna like it. So okay, it's pretty funny. You already know the ending? And it's, it's really short. Okay. It's, like, literally, you're gonna get three minutes out of fun out of it, and that's about it. But it's still really good. 
It's it's hilarious. No, I, I like the movie, like I said, um, but the ending was like too many twists and turns. Eventually, you're like, oh, I, I get it, where it's gonna go. But, you know, go see it anyways, guys, and then go buy the actual game and for Halloween and scare yourselves. Oh, man, yeah. That's a good idea. You, you should buy the game. I'm gonna buy it, because I want it. I You're not even a sponsor now. We're trying to buy the games. I don't care. I just want that game. I want that board. Um, do you see the tables for it too? They have like a coffee table with the Ouija board on top. Already on it? Yeah, I think that one's cool, but I'm not gonna. I'm not buying that anytime soon. Um, for more other horror stuff lately, uh, The Walking Dead started up again yesterday. Oh yeah. I haven't seen it yet. You haven't seen one episode of The Walking Dead? No, I've seen the first two seasons and it stopped because I read the comics. And I stopped reading the comics because the show got in the comics, and I just got tired of that. You're like, I, I don't, I can't read a comic book and watch a TV show at the same time. I just gonna quit and not watch it. And that's that's give exactly up. what I did. I feel ashamed of myself because I'll still read like Spider-Man comics when I can. And, and I'll watch still the watch the movies. Yeah. yeah. So what's your excuse? I'm a terrible person. That's my only excuse. I but, can't. Uh, I get confused. Is that yeah? Confused? That way? I think I, you know. I just not so much confused. I was irritated because like characters that died in the comics. I wanted to see die on the show, and they didn't forever, and there's some of them are still alive. Um, so, are you? Th do you think the comic? Is there any 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 decision the show made that you think was better than the comic? Like the show versus the yeah, yeah. like better, not like worse. Yeah, 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 I think so. That like was uh, something they did in the, in the show. You're like, you know what? That would have been better in the comic. Well, it's not much of a spoiler right now because we're talking about it, but um, Rick gets his hand cut off in the comic yeah. from one of the main villains. And that didn't happen on the show. I thought that was a good thing because if he cuts his hand off, even if he gets taken care of really well, mm -hmm. he's a crippled guy in the zombie apocalypse. And he doesn't yeah. know how to take care of himself one-handed. He's not going to adapt to that. At the same time, running away, there's no food. So it's probably smarter not to cut his hand off. But then I think uh, comicbook.com did an article about, are they going to cut his hand off finally? And I was like, probably. I mean, they murdered a bunch of people. Why not cut someone's hand off? Like, we want to save money on uh, CGI. We want the CGI his hand off every episode. Yeah, I wouldn't doubt that had something to do with it, too. It's it's so much easier, especially since that is all shot on film. Yeah. Um, or a, a great big chunk of uh, The Walking Dead is shot on film. Well, isn't it mostly just practical effects for the whole show? Um, I... Is there I CGI? Think so. there's, no, there's quite a bit of CGI, yeah. There was um, just the scenes even, like, to fill the background. So much CGI because you couldn't really turn um, the South, some of those landmarks they've even shown, like the big cities like Atlanta, mm -hmm. into apocalyptic world practically. You just can, like, you know, just have yeah. a, a riot go on and there. You guys are <laughs> seeing. Just film in the middle just of it. Just film during the riot or right after. You guys can you guys put the Molotov cocktails down for a little bit. We just want to film the scene. And then just have a few of your actors in it to kind of mask, yeah. make everybody look like zombies, and boom, you're done. You have a perfect TV show. That'd be way more real and gritty too, because the camera people have to fear for their lives, the actors have to fear for their lives. So now, now we gotta write into Walking Dead and tell them how to do their show better. Yeah, uh, we want to see the actors really afraid for their lives, not just acting to be afraid. They actually have to be, be afraid. Uh, now, did you hear about those characters that died on it though? The um... I, okay, this is the thing about people po post. Spoilers on on Facebook. Yeah, I ninety nine percent of the people don't, but there's like a small amount of people who do, and like no matter what they say, they always think, well, why shouldn't I? I, I if you don't want to get spoiled, don't go on Facebook. But I'm like, why do you want to be that guy though? Why do you want to be that one percent that wants to just spoil it? What do you get out of it? Yeah, yeah like, like websites and stuff, they'll like put oh spoiler warning, don't look at this article for people. But then someone decides to post a big old picture of it. Oh, these are the people who died. And it seems like they want to have create a reaction just so then like they'll defend themselves. They never just admit, I just want to be a, an asshole. Just, just to say it, I want to be an asshole. I would admit it. If I wanted to be an asshole about something, I'm not going to lie. I would do it. But not for that, because that's like, that's not my thing. What would you be an asshole for? Yeah, that's a tough one. So many things. Have you ever spoiled, wasn't that, uh, you have, do you have an example of accidentally spoiling something? Right now, with the uh, operation, it's operation, the yeah, operation um, skit, yeah, and me with um. Oh, I, I have an example of like accidentally spoiling something. Um, well, back in, in small towns, they have theaters. Back in the day, like one screen theater, they just do the same movie like for the week and back to back in the same theater. And what we would do, 
we want to watch it, then stay and watch it again, because they wouldn't kick us out or nothing. So we watched um, the first Mortal Kombat, and I guess my cousin was just being an asshole or just a, a spoiler back in the day. And the movie starts, and then, you know, the secret, it, my cousin pretty much goes, ah, that's the guy's brother. Gosh. And he ruins the whole movie for everybody else around us. And I'm like, why did you do that? I'm like, well, because I already know what's going to happen. <laughs> but why do they have to know? Like, I don't know. Like, I don't know. He was just a kid, but he spoiled it. But I like the people when we go see a movie, though, like, not yell out spoilers, but predictions. Like, I bet you that guy is, like, the secret agent. I bet you that guy is the one that, that stole the diamonds. And it makes me think, like, maybe it is. Yeah, maybe, like, why am I sitting here? Like, now I'm watching it just to see if they're wrong. Yeah, I want, yeah, I want them. But to now I'm like, or I want them to be right. Maybe it's like they gave me a really good reason, so I want their, them to be right. That's cool, too. Yeah, I like when people participate in movies. I know it's weird, like, that's not, like, an interactive place. But I used to go in Ventura to a place uh, that called Insomniac Theaters. Okay. At, like midnight, me and my dad would go watch these movies, like The Godfather. Um, so, uh, Kung... Oh, gosh, dang it. No, not Kung, Kung Fu? Um, what was it? Dang it. Enter the Dragon. Yeah. From Bruce Lee. Great. Love that movie. I saw The Warriors for the first time on the big screen there. These old, great movies that if you weren't born at that time, you don't get to see them on the big screen. So people would go there, and it'd be flooded at midnight, later, like 2 a.m. even, and people were like really into the movies and be saying the lines with it, because everyone's seen it already. Yeah. So it's, it's okay to spoil there, because um, no one's, no one's going to get spoiled. But um, they were interactive, they were getting into it, people would be cheering real loud. I like that, I like seeing people having fun with the art that they're watching at that time. Well, I saw that um, for the Rocky Horror Picture Show, they showed it in the theater, and I didn't know what it was, you know, I just went, and people were throwing popcorn and cards, and I guess people already knew what what times to do that, and I didn't know anything. I just paid ten bucks and just sat around and was like, "What is this? What's going on?" You gotta go again um, at the Fox Theater here in town. That's where I saw it. Yeah, that's the first time I saw it there too, live like that. But did you know they made it, they remade it? They, the Rocky Horror the Picture Fox Show. One? No, the Rocky Horror Picture Show. They remade it yeah, on yeah, Fox. On Fox. On, on yeah. TV. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, so not at the Fox. I don't know if you saw parts of it, but. I don't remember enough from the from seeing it at the theater because all I could remember is just people throwing stuff. I'm like, I'm like, I'm trying to figure out like, when's the next time to do something. I didn't bring anything with me, so I was the only person just sitting there. So I couldn't even focus on the movie because everyone's doing so much stuff. Oh man, they that yeah. I don't remember anything in front of the movie. They have like cues, like when to say what to the to the people trying to act out the movie, when to throw stuff. Um, I have a good time going to those. We just went to one at the smaller theater, uh, the empty space. Uh, they do it year round, like once in a while. They'll have two performances every few months, and then the big one is, is Halloween because I mean it's profound for that. So, do you think there's a movie now that could maybe be interactive that people could make it interactive? Like one of the movies. Actually, I don't know the movie personally, but in um, in London there's a movie house that sells hundred dollar tickets to mm -hmm. their movies, and the entire thing's interactive. They will um, give you a costume or parts of a costume to wear. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's a lot of noir stuff, like those detective movies. Oh, okay. And you're part of the audience. Like You've seen the crime happening in front of you. And then you go into the theater and you sit down and the crimes are happening around you while you're watching the movie. Mm -hmm. And it even starts outside the theater. Like They have the entire audience walk in together. Like, oh, we just saw this happen in here. I wonder if anybody waits outside and like mugs people. And they're like, oh, it's just part of the movie. Give them your stuff. <laughs> that genius. Like, oh, they have like one dude with the, the professional outfit, like not in the show, but like directing it. And then two people dressed up as actors robbing everybody. Yeah, he's just he's just helping out. Just don't worry, we'll give you your wallets back after. And then we're gone. We're gone. That would be, that would be terrible, but that'd be hilarious. Yeah, crime, like, crime is pretty funny. That crime would be hilarious. Like, you remember the Pokemon Go when that first started out? And people Don't bring it up. People will remember. I'm afraid that people forgot, stop playing it. But I'm afraid people start playing it again just because it's like ironic to play it again, like hipsters will play it again. They're still playing, dude. There's like, what do they say? It went from like 50 million a month to only 3 million. But that's still 3 million I, people playing. Well, it's more like people are keeping a secret, like heroin users. Like they're playing it now, but it's not like all over social media. They're just playing it like secretly, like they're still hooked on it. They just it's don't like even know. all the kids in, like, in the 80s, all the cocaine, everybody quit except for like a few just still doing it 
but their addiction is Pokemon Go. Yeah, like things like that happen. So interactive is cool. When the outdoor one, I think is awesome. It's a cool idea to bring your movie to life. But that would be hilarious if that happened. Someone just dressed up as character. Oh, I'm robbing everyone here. Character. Uh, that should be happening in more movies. They should have a. You know how they have crying sections for you bring your crying baby oh, God, to yeah. watch a movie and like. It should be one like. Do you like to talk a lot during the movie? Uh, the do you spoil movies like they put everybody who talks in the theater. Like, one all the talkers, all the people on their phone, and just put them in the theater. Just see what happens. That's a good idea. Yeah, it would, it would save me a lot of trouble because I guess sometimes, yeah, you want it quiet. You want to be able to see what you're watching. Just if you've never seen it before. And then oh, I was sitting next to this drunk dude um, watching The Strangers when that came out. And oh my God, he would not stop talking to me. He was, he was talking to everybody. He yeah. would like lean over the seats and talk to people in front of us. He was like looking back, talking to some of his buddies who couldn't see Yeah, I miss going to the movies with my dad too. That wasn't your dad? Oh, I'm sorry. Just, no. That no. was just my dad that's drunk talking to you? At movies? Yeah. Oh, it's, uh, it's better than no place, I guess. No. <laughs> you ever see bootleggers at movies, dude? Like, they, they bring backpacks to the movies and you could tell they're bootleggers, but like nobody kicks them out. No, I've never seen it happen. I've seen people with backpacks and I guess everything. Oh, just, they just have a backpack. They're just homeless with a backpack coming to the theaters and like... Bootleggers, guys, when you guys see it, it's do something. No, they just let them in and you know, out with the backpack. I've, I've honestly never seen them. I've seen people selling the DVDs, like, oh, I got. Have you ever bought a bootleg? Uh, yeah, I think I did. I don't know what movie it was for. Like, I wanted to get my little brothers to see it real quick. Mm -hmm. And he was, in, he was in the parking lot, and I was done buying my groceries. It's right there. I know it was terrible. It was horrible quality. Okay, this is uh, entertainment, so nobody. No FBI agents coming looking for this guy. They could try, but they're not gonna get any money out of me. It's, no, you don't get any money. Yeah, I mean, what are you gonna do? Oh, I'll take the thirty-eight cents out of your account every month that's left over from all your bills. I know if you go to, I I've done. I put. I'm a comedian, guys. I put on shows in places, and these guys will go around to different businesses with their like CD bootleg case, and just going around. Like they're salesmen, hey guys, is going to business. Who wants to buy bootlegs? They just go and the, and the owner will buy them. Oh, you know, what so they they turn it into like a business, like actually like with like you know forms you fill out, which ones you want, you make orders. I'm like it's getting, I don't know, I got like, I was like, I wonder if the, the, all the bootleggers like former blockbuster executives that just went into bootlegging. They, yeah, they they died out there, so they decided to go on the streets. They took it no overhead. Minimal risk if you don't get caught. Um, I don't know. A lot of people I know don't buy bootlegs anymore. They'll get it off offline, like streaming. That is kind of a bootleg kind of. Yeah, they're not still bootlegging. Yeah, it's still stealing. <laughs> you're still not doing what you're supposed to be doing. Just pay for the movie. You go on Amazon right now. You can rent one for three dollars to seven dollars. Yeah, I think people are getting tired. They still will still make money off selling movies. I think they always will. Because people just kind of like don't like crappy movies, like quality. Oh yeah. If, unless it's like a crappy movie where like they don't care, like it's not good enough for them to care that it's like a guy holding it, holding a, a camera and like people walking by. When it's not that big a deal to them, they won't pay money. But people like the product, they they'll pay for quality. Like, they'll pay for it. Oh yeah, sure. Like you see those box sets for for TV shows, and it's like oh here's a two hundred dollar box set and comes with all this extra bonus features and stuff. People want that because they like the product, like you're saying. They'll pay for the best quality they can get and more of it if they can get it. And I think, yeah, I think that'll keep any artist going, whether it's music or movies. I don't know so much about art anymore because you take a picture of someone's art, which is really, like, they were talking about that at the conventions. People draw pictures, like the ones we have on our back wall, some of them, and people just take pictures of their work and then they don't buy anything. And that's like, you can get a really high quality picture just taking it like that now. So like an, artist, yeah, an artist made a lot of money taking other people's Instagram posts and blowing them up and sold them as paintings. Oh, Jesus. So he made money off people's Instagram posts, like good ones. Yes. He made money that way. But would he actually paint them out, though? No, he just, no, he just randomly chose Instagram posts and printed them out on a giant board and made them look like Instagram posts and he sold them as art. 
that's and yeah, he didn't give no money to the Instagram poster, so Damn. it was just him. I guess that's one of the risks though, about posting on social media though. You don't have control over who sees it and what they can do with it. Um, there's some websites for artists or photographers um, where if anyone downloads or takes a picture of it, it will have your logo spread out all over it. Um, kind of a copyright thing. Well, there's ways to get around that even. Yeah, because yeah, I had some headshots that um, somebody took of me, took pictures of me. And I wanted the picture, but they said, no, you got to pay me so I can remove the watermark. I'm like, it's me. You took the picture watermark, of me. Why can't I, why can't I have the picture of me? Because uh, I'm the photographer. You took the picture. It's me. Why can't I just have it? So I did my Photoshop and I got rid of it. So Terrible. But Terrible. it was me. So I'm, not, I'm stealing from myself. You're much. stealing from everybody. That's, you're, you steal from yourself, you're just playing yourself. Boom. It happened. Is that DJ Khaled or something? Who the fuck is that guy? I have no idea. I see his picture like in memes and stuff. Yeah. I've never heard any of his. But memes. you just said his catchphrase. Because I've seen yourself. that picture a million times. That one picture of him like standing over a bar mm -hmm. and looking at someone all serious. Oh, you just played yourself. I don't know what his voice sounds like at all. You have no. He's just a meme star. So that, that's it. That's how people are now. They could be a, a star from a meme. Yeah. Well, look at the what's her name, the overly obsessive girlfriend. I have no idea who she is other than that. It's just a picture someone found online one day. Yeah, there, I've seen a guy like that, like a real dorky redheaded guy, that mean guy, like a school picture, and he made it into like a, he has like a YouTube channel now, with a meme. Yeah, I mean, he took an opportunity, he saw it, and he ran with it. That's good. That's smart for him. I've seen people try to make themselves meme stars, like, hey guys, make me a meme, and they don't go. It does not work. They're trying to be famous as You memes. can't make yourself a meme. That's I'm, just terrible. A meme, like love, just happens. You know, you don't plan it, you just one day walk in, pick your nose, boom, me, all over the world. That's true, That's, there's no other way to look at it, it's just what happens. All good? Alright, okay. um, looks like our first episode's gonna wrap up this time. Um, I didn't get to everything we wanted to talk about this time, but you know what? Uh, if you're feeling like this is dragging on a bit, or if it's a little too long and you want to hit us more points, give us some pointers, this is the first one. And maybe throw in the comments your ideas for a title. Right now, it's just going to be a working title, and it's not even working very well, obviously, or we wouldn't be asking for more help. Yeah, send us money. So send us money is going to be the name of this podcast and said, send us money podcast. And um, every time you do, I'm, I'm going to keep it. That's, that's how we we'll wear nicer works. clothes. I'll get a haircut. I, I got a haircut, but it's not very good. So, no, it's just shorter. Yeah, you, you, your hair always, your head is still lop, um, um, lopsided. So that's yeah, that's the look. That's the look I was going for when I was born. Was lopsided head. What do you call? It? Yeah, but if you want any suggestions to give us, please do. Any questions you have, um, feel free to hit us up on Facebook at wwwfacebookcom Uh This will be on YouTube, our Facebook page, on iTunes very soon. And anything else? You want to wrap it up? Yeah, if you guys want to hear my comedy on Funnier um, at josewastaken.com or on Twitter at comedyoutsideon.com and I'll be sharing you know videos from here and the podcast too. Perfect. All right, that, that wraps it up. Yeah, go check out that video we talked about. Um, go watch Ouija. And then not n next week? Um, no, yeah, next week Doctor Strange comes out. So be sure to review that. Um, not next episode, but the episode after that. Yep. All right, have a good one, guys. Thanks.